Hello, and welcome to my wood shop. Today, we're going to talk about routers. Routers are a basic tool for most woodworking these days that allows you to make uh, consistent depths of cuts and mortises and things, uh, get different shapes going if you want. Uh, but they do have a little bit of a history. We'll just touch on that real quick here right now. Um, this is a router right here. Uh, before the advent of electric motors and such, uh, this sort of tool is what someone would use to make a consistent depth of cut. Say uh, they're doing a mortise for a stair uh, stringer or something like that, uh, or a lock mortise. Um, you would have a, a blade, basically a chisel that's held in place uh, on the sole of the tool and you would uh, go ahead and cut uh, with a consistent depth there. Uh, I put this piece of wood on the bottom of, of this particular plane to keep from marring the material I was working on with the, uh, the metal on it. Uh, nice little tool and very useful. Um, actually, I have this small one here that I use as well. Uh, modern day uh, purchase, not an antique, uh, model 271 by Stanley. Um, again, just a a small chisel. Uh, it takes a little bit of setup to get it right, uh, but I'll use that for lock sets and things uh, in interior spaces when I don't want to have all the dust and commotion of a router. Um, nice little tool for getting a consistent depth of cut. Uh, this is one of the things that a router does really well. Another one is that it can make shapes. It can do a round over. It can do a rabbit cut. It can do uh, OG cuts, depending on the bits that you put in it. And that would be replacing uh, the old-fashioned molding planes. Uh, here's a, uh, a Stanley, what is it, 45. Um, this was a rather sophisticated version back in the day. You used to make them out of wood uh, with an individual plane for each shape that you would do. Uh, this one had interchangeable blades uh, and fences you could adjust and move around to make all of the different kinds of cuts that we would be doing uh, nowadays with a, a spinning blade. Uh, so uh, those are the two functions that, uh, that routers typically take over for. Um, they come in various sizes, all the way from a Dremel tool and a base is a very small router um, for very, very light duty work. Um, this would be what would be traditionally called maybe a, a trim router. Uh, it's just a, a smaller router. You want to have the right size tool for the job that you're doing. Um, this one's a real workhorse. It does a lot of work for me uh, because most of my cuts are, are, are light. But if I need a little more power, a little more heft, Gonna be swinging a little bit of a bigger blade. Uh, here's an inch, and, uh, inch and a half, horse and a half, uh, portable cable router. Uh, it has both a quarter inch chuck and a half inch chuck in it, uh, so I can I can do some bigger blades. Um, you can get a two horse router, a three horse router. You can have a a shaper or a pin router. Those are massive industrial tools. We'll be sticking to these two uh, smaller uh, tools for the duration of this video. Let's start out with the trim router here. Um, it's got the same concepts all the way up through the larger routers, uh, but it's this one's just easy to show. Um, so what you're looking for in a router is not only the power and amperage that's in it, uh, but a good solid base. Uh, there are some routers out there, uh, and I'm not advocating any particular brand right now, uh, but there are some routers out there that have uh, fairly weak little bases, and you'll know what I mean when you see them. Uh, they're just not really solid. Uh, they'll get a little bit out of square sometimes, a little bit of an adjustment. Um, this one in particular I like because it grabs the entire body of the motor right here with this clamp. Very solid. It doesn't move. It doesn't change uh, its position. Uh, it does have this adjustment up and down right here, which will come, become uh, important in a little bit, you'll see. Uh, it also has this quick release sort of function, so I can separate the motor from the base itself. Um, but you can see it's, it's uh, just a, a, a firm clamping mechanism that holds on to the body of the router. Um, one thing I, I also like when I'm shopping for a router uh, is to find one that has a flat top on it because it becomes very useful when you're trying to change bits. Installing bits is probably a, as good a place to start as any. I've brought out my old trim router here. I used to call her R2-D2 for obvious reasons. 
Um, because there's a few things uh, that about an older tool, and some of you might have them, that you need to know about. Um, and I can show you what some of the improvements have been made over the years here. Um, this is a great little tool here. Um, but here is uh, the collar. It's got a nut on top. I'm going to take the nut out. And then here is what is called the collet. And it is uh, a small split tube. You see the split right there uh, that's cone shaped uh, so that when you put the nut on top of it and force it down into the cone shape inside the router here, it gives the shaft of the bit a nice tight hug and holds it in place. Uh, since we're looking at this, you can see inside uh, where the collet belongs in here. Uh, yeah, it's nice and clean in there. You want it to be clean in there, uh, especially if you're using pitchy woods and such. Uh, dust can get caught in there. Uh, you tightened it down last time and it starts to compress it and it gets stuck in there. Uh, and it can cause bits to be out of round, uh, so you get some vibration in the tool. Um, uh, that's at a minimum. At a maximum, it could cause what you think is a tightened bit to come out, uh, and that's never any good. We're trying to avoid that at all costs. Um, so uh, make sure that's clean in there, make sure that this is smooth all the way around the outside, that the collet is uh, a nice clean fit. And you put it in there and we will put the nut back on here. And now we'll take a look at the bit. I've got a quarter inch roundover bit here. Check the bearing, make sure that it's uh, running smooth because that's going to be up against my material. Uh, I can spin it like that, no grinding spins nice and free. Uh, and I'm going to check the shaft here as well, make sure that it's smooth and it's not going to uh, get a burr on it uh, uh, on the uh, collet when I put it in here. Um, so obviously, you know, this is just one of many bits you can put in here. So I'll go ahead and put it in there. Uh, this router here requires two wrenches, where this one here has got a little button you can push and it's got one, one uh, wrench. Uh, so I'll put this on and we'll tighten this bit down. Wait a minute. I'm about to make a grave error here. When I put this bit in, you can hear that it bottomed out. The shaft is sitting all the way down on the bottom of the space where the collet is here. As I use this router, as I'm, as I'm, uh, as I'm uh, running it through the wood, I'm necessarily going to be generating a little bit of heat. It's going to get warm. That shaft can expand ever so slightly, but it can expand. And when it does, it can overcome the ability of that collet to hold on to the shaft. At a minimum, my cut is adjusted. Maybe I've got to replace a couple pieces of wood. But they are also known to just sort of let go and the bit comes flying out. That's not a good thing. So, to avoid that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finger tighten this with the nut right here. And I'm going to lift it up a little bit. I'm going to make sure, I guess I have to hold it up with my finger. I'm going to make sure it's not bottomed out. It only has to be a sixteenth of an inch or so. And then, uh, make sure it's tight. You don't have to be a gorilla on this one. You just got to make sure that it's secure. Okay? So now I've got this bit in place. Now, after using this or tightening it down, uh, heating and cooling, whenever you've set a tool down for a while, uh, and you're going to pick it up again, it's a good idea to make sure that things are tight, uh, especially these ones. They're known when they cool down, they could have loosened up a little bit, so you might want to tighten them again. Um, but in this case, I'm going to try to take this bit out and loosen it. Well, because I didn't use it, the bit automatically loosened up. But sometimes these bits get kind of stuck in there. They're hard. You, you loosen the nut up and the bit doesn't want to come out. So the, the trick in the old days was tap on it with something, using the wrench here, but tap on the nut and pull on it and pretty soon one of those little shocks and the bit will come out. Okay? So to combat that sort of problem, they've come up with a, a new type of collet. And most routers have been made in the last decade or so will have this. But you notice when I pulled this out, the collet came with the nut. Uh, the collet also has, you can see, four cuts in it. There's four of them that come down from the top, and then another four that come up from the bottom. Um, you'll also notice, if I pull the other collet out, that the taper is far less. I don't know if, hopefully this is focusing here. Uh, this is a far shallower taper than that one is. Okay? That means that when I tighten this down, 
it's going to have a whole lot more force grabbing onto that shank of the of the router bit than uh, the old-fashioned one was. Um, I can separate. You can see that the the uh, the collet is loose inside the nut. It does spin around. Um, I can drive this out if I wanted to, uh, but why would I want to? Um, it would cause all kinds of trouble. So making sure that this is clean inside here and threading this down. I can now put the blade, put the bit in, and you can see it fell all the way down again, just like the other one did. Um, if I just give it a little tension. I can still adjust it up and down here, and it'll stay there. Now I can tighten this one down, and we're ready to go. And again, you don't have to too much on these things. It's got a good mechanical advantage uh, with that collet the way it is. Um, but I'm going to do a little thing here now. I've, I've, I'm done routing for the day. I'm going to change bits, and I'm going to loosen this. And you'll notice I cannot pull that bit up. The nut's loose. I can't pull the bit out. What am I going to do? In the old days, tap, 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 tap. Okay. Now what I can do, since that collet is attached, is I can give it, okay, it's already loose. Okay. Let me put this on here like this so you can see it graphically. It's already loose. I come around and now over to here, it tightens again. Now I'm pulling that collet up and out and the blade comes out easily. This whole concept might be easier to see on my horse and a half here. It's a little bit bigger. It's got a, a quarter inch chuck here and a half inch chuck for larger bits. Uh, you can see how clean this quarter inch chuck is. And this one here, it's got, it's got a little bit of crud on it. I'll probably want to clean that before I use it again. Once the bit is installed properly, now it's time to adjust the height of the base. This one I just unclamp it. Spin the, bit, the adjuster until it's right where I want it to be. In this case, I'm trying to do a round over. If I wanted a step round over, I'd bring it down. So I can eyeball this and lock it down, but I'll be making a test cut before I actually do anything. On this one over here, I get to loosen this and then I can adjust the height. There's a spiral, sort of an incline here, in which I can adjust the height and then tighten it down. So we're ready to make a cut now. There's a lot of stuff that you have to think about when you're going to be doing this. Um, or maybe you don't. It all depends on the wood that you've got. I've got a fairly consistent piece of white oak here right now, but you can see that the grain is going at an angle across it. Um, if you've ever done any hand planing, you'll know that if you plane this direction here, uh, because the grain is going this way, you'll get a nice smooth cut. But if I flip this over, you'll notice it says A, and here's B. If I flip it over this way, and I make a cut the same direction, because the grain is going that way, I might get a lot of chatter. That same sort of thing is going to happen with the router here. So, maybe I'll get a clean cut here, I don't know. Uh, but the chances are, uh, as I'm routing this A side, I'll get a clean cut here. But when I flip it over to the B side, I'll probably get some chatter along that edge. We'll see what happens here. Um, but I'm going to go pretty aggressively at this uh, to see if I can make it fail. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that you normally route at this sort of a speed. But let me make two cuts here, and we'll see what happens. Well, as you can see, I failed to fail. Um, I got a nice clean cut out of this one, and it didn't chip out on me. It's just a testament to how sharp my bit is and the uh, consistency of this particular material. But you will run into materials that will have a wild grain in it or something that you're going to need to, uh, to make a cut and not have it be chipping out. In that case, you want to do what's called a climb cut. This is for experienced people only, uh, and you have to be very careful of it because I'm going to be going backwards with this bit. Now you'll notice when I do it, I'm going to draw very carefully backwards. 
it's going to want to take off on me as I come towards me. So I'm going to try to make smaller cuts. If I can do a, a small cut and then drop the bit a little bit and make my finish cut, that's even better. Um, so, but I'm going to do a climb cut backwards, which you'll see I'll finish out going forward. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. I did say it was just going to be an introduction to routers, and this really is just the introduction. Put a bit in, make a cut. These are very versatile tools, and there's a whole lot that can be done with them. Uh, cutting arcs and radiuses, uh, different sorts of jigs and follower guides, uh, fences, mounting them in tables. There's a lot of different things you can do. I'll probably make at least one more video, but if you reply in the, in the comments on YouTube here, and you've got something specific that you'd like me to show, I'd be glad to see if I can help you out. Take care.